Hello drummers, welcome to this free video song lesson where today I'm going to show you how to play the best parts, the coolest parts, the most important parts to the song. Give Me One Reason by Tracy Chapman, drummed by the studio great Steve Ferrone. As always with these free lessons I've got PDFs for you to download from my website for free. You can find the link beneath this video. So I have these three pages printed out in front of you as we go through this together. It's going to make things a lot easier for you to understand. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, different sections, all the main grooves, all the main fills, uh, lots of cool stuff going on, lots of subtle drumming. Um, and then while you're over at the website, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. We talk about more about this at the end of the lesson, but basically you get access to almost 650 full video song lessons where I teach you a song from start to finish. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. And like I said, I've got almost 650 full video song lessons and you get that for a full year for just 97 pounds. But like I said, we'll talk more about that and the extra bonuses at the end of this lesson. If you want to make your own song suggestions, please go over to my Facebook page. You'll see a post pinned to the top of the page. Write your song suggestions beneath that post. Other get to, others get to, um, get to vote on it. <coughs> Getting all emotional about it. And then the most popular songs get chosen for future lessons like this one was today. So, drums come in at 41 seconds. We've got quite a long, long intro. And um, Steve keeps, like I said just a moment ago, Steve keeps things relatively simple, but there's lots of nuances in his playing as we're going to see. So, the drum for the beginning, nice and simple. We get one and two and three and four e and. High, low, snare, snare, low. Starting on beat three. One, two, three and four e and. One, right, left, right there for the snare, snare floor tom. We then go into our main groove. And um, we've, got, we've got two variations. The hi-hat and snare drum are maintaining this pattern. One and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four. We got a one and two and a three and also and a one and a three and and a one occurring there. You could play this double handed if you wanted to. Um, I like to play it single handed um, and um, it's, it's just a preference really. I find it quite comfortable to play it single handed. Um, but if you wanted to play a double handed, then perhaps you could make it a little bit smoother. But I think Steve's playing it single handed because we get this sort of natural accent where he's doing this push pull effect. So you can sort of tell that he's playing it one handed, but feel free to do it double handed. Underneath that hi hat pattern, <clears throat> we got a bass drum, two different bass drum patterns. We've got the first one for the first bar one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a one. And then <clears throat> If you go to the second line, that first bar you can see is our next variation where he pushes with a bass drum note on the uh of beat one before the f um, first snare drum note. The other two bass drums are exactly the same place, the and of two and the and of three. One, a two, and a three, and four, and a one, a two, and a three, and four, and a. So there are two bass drum patterns that occur throughout pretty much the entire song. We've either got one, two, and a three, and four, and a one, and a three and four and a one or we've got one a two and a three and four one a two and a three really nice groovy ideas so we've gone over the first line the first bar of the second line the uh, the next bar on that second line we've got a variation with the hi-hat that occurs just once in the song we get one a two and a three then we get and and now we're going to play it as a double hand pattern Open hi-hat on the and of three there, closes with the snare drum on beat four, and he plays four E and a one, four E and a one. On top of that, very subtle um, open hi-hat occurs. <coughs> Excuse me. Very subtle hi-hat occurs they are on the uh of beat four. That's falling with your left hand, the tiny little opening. So we get this little open hi-hat on the uh of beat four. One, a two, and a three, and four, e, and a one. Very subtle. But really fun to play, sort of a little sp um, sparky, funky sort of push on the hi-hat opening there. <clears throat> the next line, I will get rid of this fr um, frog in my throat at some point. Next line, first two bars, standard groove. Next bar, our next bass drum variation. The last bar has that push, push again. But we end with this 
and four, open into and snare on its own. You could play the hi-hat with the snare drum if you wanted to. And four, and one, into the next line. So that last bar, one, a two, and a three, and four, and one. So that's our first uh, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, basically our first eight bars of the song. Let me now play it up to speed for you without the microphone on so you can hear just the drums. Here we go. So our next example occurs at 102, and I believe it's the next four bars after the, the previous section I just showed you. So I've included three bars of groove there just to give you an idea of how that idea continues with the bass drum patterns alternating, kind of alternating. We get one, two, and a three, and four, and a one, a two, and a three, and four, and a one, two, and a three, and four, and a... And then the fourth bar is really what I included it for, our next drum fill, one, a two, I haven't written it with the um, hi-hat and snare drum together, but you could play it. One, a two, and, we're then going to open on the and a two, and it's then going to close with the high tom on beat three, and three, then we get another open hi-hat, and, and this time we get 40 ands. It's the 40 and drum fill from the beginning of the song, but the bass drum comes down on the and of four, I believe. I don't think it's just bass drum on its own, but you could do that. I think it's where we get the floor tom at the same time as the bass drum on the and of four. So, one, a two, and three, and four, three, and one. So you can hear that bass drum, even within a drum fill, is maintaining that and of two and the and of three. Um, it's a very um, clever idea. You'll you see more examples of this later in the song, where um, uh, Steve is playing these drum fills, but still maintaining that bass drum pattern. So the groove of the song is still being laid underneath uh, the drum fills. Okay, let me play those four bars for you up to speed. So at 1 minute 12, I believe it's the next four bars, we get our first chorus. Now I've written here, a shaker can be heard creating extra notes. So um, this is what I believe Steve's playing on the drum kit, but really what you're hearing is the shaker, which is replicating what I believe Steve is playing on the hi-hat also. He might just be playing eighth notes during the chorus, keeping out of the way of that shaker effect. Um, but what I really wanted to do is, is show you how you can sort of replicate that. Um, so um, what I believe Steve might be playing, and this is also how you replicate that effect during the chorus, um, you're going to play the and a two and the and a three every single half of the half of the beat on the ands of each of the beats. So we get for the for the first bar without the crash symbol, one and a two and a three and a four and a one. We're playing the ostinato all the way through the bar. So not just the and of two and the and of four every time, every beat. So we get one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Next bar might be a little bit trickier for you because now we've got the bass drum falling on the earth uh of beat one, that push effect, but it's gonna come down one of those hi-hats. One and a uh two, obviously the uh of one. One and the. Uh. So get comfortable playing that bass drum with the hi-hat within that pattern. Next line, bar one, same as the bar above it. And then bar four, we get, we get an open hi-hat at the end, the and of four. We don't get and or, it's just and one, open hi-hat on its own. Okay, let me play those four bars for you up to speed. So at 1 minute 36, continuing with the chorus of our, our, our first drum fill that I wanted to include for you. The first bar is just a bar of groove to sort of lead you, lead you into it. The second bar is the drum fill. We get one and a two. Then we get and three into the high tom. And three. Then the bass drum and snare drum. 
and, again, notice that base still falling on the and, a two and the and, a three. Then we get 40 and, old faithful at the end there, 40 and, with, again, I believe the floor tom and base jump together. So one and a two and three and four and one. One, two and three and four and one. Really nice. Let me play those up to speed for you. At 1 minute 41, I wanted to include this example because in the second bar we get a, a cool little variation of the hi-hat pattern where he plays one E and on the hi-hat, not and or two, it's one E and this time. So the first bar, standard groove, one, two, and a three, and four, and, open on its own, followed by, and one E and a two. So you can see that, that bass drum on the uh of one falls in the gap that the hi-hat leaves. But then he continues with the and a thing afterwards. So straight back to it, straight after that beat. So it's two bars together slowly. One, two, and a three, and four, and one, the and a two, and three, and four, and a... Well, that's pretty much up to speed, but let me play for you, play it for you now without me yakking on over the top. So at 2.05, we get um, a, a cool little drum fill leading into a nice bell writing ball pattern afterwards. So first bar, I won't go over that for you. Standard groove, just thought I'd include it so we get a nice even number of bars here for... Second bar, we get one, a two, and a three. So it's a price snare drum on beat three there, and a three. Then I'm gonna play it with my left hand, snare drum and bass drum together, and, and then 40 and with the bass drum, 40 and still, and the same idea as before, the old 40 and, but then I believe he plays two crash cymbals, left, right, going into the bell pattern afterwards. So we get 40 and a one, 40 and a one. That second bar, one, a two, and a three, and forty, and a one. Then we go into the next part where I've, I've written uh, a shaker can be heard creating extra notes. This is just the drum part. So it's quite obvious here that um, Steve is, is just playing eighth notes, perhaps giving more um, credit or credence, whatever the word is, um, to the idea that during the previous courses he is just playing eighth notes and let the shaker create the effect. Because here he's definitely just playing eighth notes and he's doing this, this cool motion well, the bell of the right symbol is being accented on the downbeats, one, two. We're still playing the eighth note on the and, but he's doing this motion here called the molar whip in order, to, in order for him to help um, play that comfortably. If you haven't um, learned that, you could just do it this way. But it's not gonna sound as smooth. Perhaps you just wanna play quarter notes instead. So you could just play The bell is the more important part, but what he's actually doing is this. That motion helping him to play it smoothly. So that first bar I just showed you, the second bar has the push. So let me play those four bars slowly. One, two, and a three, and four, and a one. Two and a three and four and a one. Two and three and four. One, a two and three and four. Okay, up to speed. At 2.33 we get my favourite drum fill in the song plus a little break. So it's, it's leading out of that um, right symbol section. We get one, two and three and four, just a bar of groove. Then the second bar gets the, um, we play this, one, two and. And then this was quite hard to work out precisely what's being played. It sounds like there might have been some overdub stuff going on, but this is how I would play it, so how it sounds most like on the recording. He's playing on the high tom, three E and a. Uh. So he's playing the and a three quietly. That's why it's written in brackets. It's a ghost note. Three E and duh. Three E and uh. And with that quiet high tom note, he's playing the bass drum. The tricky bit is to then come down to the snare drum to play the flam. Mm. Mm. 
So um, if you wanted to leave out the bass drum and just um, um, leave out the ghost note as well, you could play. But that bass drum fills in that gap, so you could play. But what I think he's doing is ghosting that high tom on top. Quite tricky to play. Um, it just requires a little bit of muscle memory. Let's see if I can get it around a few times for you. One, two, and three, four. That was pretty much it. So we get that lovely little flam. If you can't, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, you could just play just a single snare drum note on beat four. We then go to the next bar where he skips over beats one, two, and three, comes back in with a crash cymbal on beat four. One, two, three, four. Then we go back into our groove, starting with an open hi-hat. One and two and a three and four. And he's back to Old Faithful there with the hi-hats. One and two and a three and four and a. So it's, it's, it's bar slowly. One, two and three and four. One, two and three and a four and one, two, three, four. One, two and a three and four and a. And up to speed. Okay, page three and 302, uh, we get, for the first bar, we get some extra little open hi-hat stuff going on. One, two, and a three, and four, and a one. I like to play that four, uh, four, and then right, left, right for those, those two hi-hat notes. Uh, one, two, and a three, and four, and a one. Something like that. One, two, and a three, and four, and a one. That's how he plays it. It's just... So it's open for all those notes. You could play it like that, and I don't tend to play the hi-hat closing on beat one with the bass drum. I don't play that with my hand, I just let it, even though I rent it that way, I play it with just the foot. Because it, uh, it just feels smoother for me. Then the second bar we get this drum fill. So one and two E and three E and four E and. Simple as that, we're just coming up to the hi-hat openings on each of the ands. One and two E and three E and four E and one. Okay, up to speed. At three minutes, 20, 29, we get this. One and a two and a three and four and. So it's, like, it's, our, it's our chorus idea with the thing going on all the way through. But we get four and, two open hi-hats there simply. Four and one. Again, I've written it with the hi-hat being played there with the hand, but you could just play it with the um, hi-hat foot. Then we get, it's quite hard to hear what's going on. I, I think he, because there's like a tambourine on beat two, which disguises if, if Steve's playing anything there but the drums he's playing, not, maybe not the hi-hat, he's playing one and two and three and four E and. Very sparse, but works with the song. One and two and three and four E and one. Okay, in context with the bar before it. Then finally at 3 minute 48 we get the, the last section of the song. We got the first bar, one, two, and three, and four, and a one. Second bar, we get one and a two and a three and open hi-hat, then closes, four E and a. So we get our, a, a simple four notes on the snare drum, four E and a one, but it goes into an open hi-hat, not a crash. Where it closes on the and before those two hi-hat, well, at the same time as those extra hi-hat notes. One and a two. So that next line we get one and a two and a three and, same idea again, opening on the and where it's gonna go into a snare drum buzz roll. So he's basically playing four E and a one, four E and a one, leading into that last snare drum note with the bass drum on beat one of the next bar, but he's buzzing them. Now, I'm not a master at buzzing, uh, an electric drum kit is actually kind of, it, it's, it's easier to play on a real snare drum with real uh, bouncing skins. This is trying to replicate it, so it sounds a bit messy perhaps, that's my excuse anyway. But basically, you, you're um, loose grip, and I'm sort of gently pushing into the, sna to the snare drum to create multiple bounces with each strike. So you can see, my, my, naturally my little finger comes off the stick to let the stick bounce as much as possible. 
that was nicer. Ideally, you don't want to hear the da 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 da. You want to hear it as zzz. That was nice. But he's basically playing four e and a one. That's the motion, but just buzzing each note. And the accent at the end there. So we get a one and a two and a three and four e one. Four e and a one. Something like that, you can perhaps work on making the buzz notes smoother, make them a nice even note. Steve's really good at that, it sounds great on the recording. So then we um, skip over the rest of that bar, and then the next bar, skip over beat one, this is where the band comes back in. One and two and three and four and one, and it slows down there from around beat three. One and two and three and four and one. Perhaps that was slowing down a little bit too late. One and two and three and four. And one. Something like that. If this is the recording, you'll know how much the band slows down, but we get a little cymbal wash at the end. So finally, let me play for you um, those two lines up to speed. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download all three pages of the, uh, of the PDFs for free from my website, the links beneath this video. And like I said at the beginning of the lesson, um, while you're over there, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for £97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. And like I said earlier on, that's almost 650 full video song lessons where I teach a song from start to finish. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. So there's loads and loads of stuff on the website to get your full songs to get your teeth stuck into. Uh, so thank you for signing up and give you access to hundreds more little videos teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos. I give you three e-books I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill or on holiday. So you've got plenty of stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, then feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.